Hello, everyone. It is so great to, well, I don't see you, I see your names. Welcome to today's webinar. My name is Lisa. I'm from a small town called Robertson, which is near to Cape Town in South Africa. I've been teaching for quite a few years. I've taught students from Vietnam, from Germany, from Italy, from New Zealand, from all over the place. It is great to see all of you. I see names. I see people from South Africa, from Joburg, Josie, more from Josie, lots of Joburg people here today. It's great to see you all. Great for you to all introduce yourselves. Um, Scotland, excellent. They're so exciting. Nelspreit. So we have quite a lot of South Africans today. And where else? Okay, great. So today's webinar, as you guys will all already all know, is about the assignment. It's three. Live, I'm talking such nonsense. Level three, assignment A. Czech Republic. Paul. Paul. We we almost neighbours. Cameroon. Oh my word, California. U.S. and living in Spain, Italy. We really have. Such a wide variety of people. It is great that so many people around the world speak English as a second language. South Africa, hi. Okay. So today's webinar is going to go as such. The first half an hour, we'll go through signs, signs, slides that will help you, that will all be about giving you information and tips about your assignment. And then the second half an hour will be our answer questions. All right. Uganda, Ireland, it is great. Keep your questions for half an hour because I can't. So, oh my word, I'm offline for a moment. Ah, oh my goodness, I hope I come back online right away. I just lost connection for a moment. I'm back. I'm back. I'm sorry about that. There was no reason for it. So, as I was saying, keep your questions for the second half of, the, of this webinar, because I won't be able to read them all while we are doing the slides. This assignment, obviously, is for all of those doing Level 3 Assignment A, but if you are busy with Level 5 Assignment B, for instance, that assignment has a lot of things that are similar. It's also a grammar assignment. So, what I say will be of use. All right, let's go straight into it. And luckily. Okay, so we will explore the following. This is what it's all about, the assignment. What the assignment assesses. So what, what is the assignment looking for? What does it expect from all of you? What does it hope that you will provide for them? We will tell you all of the documents you need to know. Birmingham, the place where Duran Duran is from. Excellent. Okay. Uh, the structure. I'm talking too much nonsense. I will stop. Okay, documents to download, the structure of the lesson plans. Very important because they all have their very specific structures. The form that you need to teach, which as you know, we will go into in detail. The past continuous with the interrupting action. Teacher language, also a very, very important part. And finally, the writing a uh, reflection, your personal reflection. Great, so those are the aspects that you need to deal with in your assignment. The assignment assesses your ability to produce learning aims and objectives for a specified lesson type and class level. So you need to have a look at what aims and objectives are, carefully do the research, and also the kind of class it is and the age of the children. It is children in this aspect. You will need to produce lesson plans, it's two lesson plans, for a specified lesson type and class level. And you also need to produce resources. We will go into all of these things in more detail as we go through all the slides. But those are the main things. Italy, hi, great. If you are joining us now, we are talking about level three, assignment A. All right. So the assignment assesses your ability very specifically to write personal reflections for learning and teaching. So that's the reflection part. And plan a lesson stage. Did I say this? 
in which students are led to analyze the target language. So the target language is the specific grammar that we are speaking about. So your lesson stage needs to be completely focused on that. And also very important, use language that is appropriate for the specified class. It has to be for the, best, for the right age and the right level. And that you obviously need to take into account. So before you start the assignment, there are, there's a whole set of documents to download. It's like your package. This is your assignment package. You need to go to the assignment page, scroll all the way down to the bottom. Applicable for level five. Uh, yes, as I said earlier, it is also applicable if you're doing level five. Level five B assignment is also a grammar assignment. So a lot of what we say in this will be applicable, but obviously it is mainly about level three assignment A. So it, you might still pick up tips that are useful because they're similar as assignments. All right, as I was saying, I actually will not be answering more questions while I'm chatting because then I will get too distracted. Back to the documents you need to download on your assignments page. Scroll down to the bottom and have a look at all of these things. So you, they will tell you, give you advice of how you need to do this and tell you exactly what needs to be done to write a face-to-face -face lesson plan, an online lesson plan, materials file, personal reflection, and mod. Okay, so that's what you need. That will tell you what you need to do. The documents you download will also include model files. So the model files are examples of the files that, of the what you need to do. They are based on a different form. So the model files are there. So you can say, oh, look, there is a face-to-face -face lesson. Now I understand how I need to write it. But the model file is not about the past continuous with an interrupting action. It's about a completely different topic. So learn what you can from the model file, but obviously you can't use it. You can't use the information it's given you because it is on a completely different topic. Take note of that. It's very important. So use them as research, but you can't copy because it's about a different class, a different class that doesn't exist. All right. Lesson plans. You need to write two lesson plans. A face-to-face -face lesson plan, which is a lesson plan as if you were teaching in a real class with children in desks and you have a whiteboard. That is that class. And also a second lesson plan that is for an online class. Maybe the school flooded and now you have to teach that class online. Or maybe you are just an online teacher. So there'll be various reasons for the two different kinds of lesson. These two lessons actually need to be the same. It's the same class. They're not different lessons. They are the same class with just different technical differences. So obviously with a face-to-face -face lesson, you can, you can throw a ball for a child to catch, which you can't do online. But other than that, these two lessons are the same and they need to mirror each other. They're just very little small tweaks Small differences, but not big differences. They are the same lesson with small, small things that, that make them slightly different. Whilst planning for this lesson, read the case study on the assignment page. This is, it's like a little novelette. It tells you the story about the children that you are putting this letter, letter, letter lesson together for. It's it tells you how old they are, where they're from, what level they are. So it tells you you are writing, you are putting a class together for these specific children. They are 10 to 12 years old. They are from Thailand. Their level is A2. All of this information is in the case study. It is very important because it will put you in the correct place from which to start your assignment. So read that. Take note of it. Okay, so the lesson plans, you need to look at all the stages. You need to look at aims and objectives. So the aim, aim to teach the target language and the target grammar, and objectives are the little steps 
that you need to follow to get there and have a look at those differences between aims, aim, aim, aims and objectives and keep all of it based and focused on the target language. You might have great ideas of how to have a class and have lovely resources, but don't forget you are teaching a specific grammar form and that is what the lesson is all about. Okay, now the PPP lesson plan format. You will have learned it before. Now you need to now you need to put all everything you've learned and research together. So PPP lesson plan format has three stages, three main PPP stages, and then two extras. So the warmer is just your warming up ice breaking stage, very short, quick five minutes just to settle everyone in. Then you have your presentation stage, which is perhaps the most important part. It is where you present the target language and the form and, and introduce it to the students for the first time. The practice session is the, the stage in the lesson where the students are given an opportunity to practice what they've learned. So this might be with worksheets or working together or talking. So the practice stage worksheets are the potentially the easiest way to do it and that you can see if they understand it as well. Produce, this is the fourth, the third officially, but the fourth in terms of this assignment stage. Produce, can the students actually produce this language? So it's also sometimes called the freer practice. So it's when they are given the opportunity to talk and go into spontaneous conversation are they able to use the language that they've just learned in an actual conversation so it's a very important stage as well and finally plenary which is another way of saying wrap up so it's you have a look at everything and wrap up what have you learned put it together so that's the plenary okay as I mentioned before, and as it will give you all the details you need in the case study, the students you are planning this specific lesson for are students aged 10 to 12, not little ones, not teenagers, just tweens. That's a great age. And at an A2 level, they are keen and they don't know everything yet. Great age. All right. So the form to teach, as I've briefly mentioned before, the past continuous tense for interrupted action. Past continuous is also called sometimes the past progressive tense. It's exactly the same. It's like saying simple past, past simple. It's the same for interrupted action. So an example of that, I was playing outside when my mum called me. So we first have the past continuous uh, clause of the sentence. I was playing outside or I was eating lunch when in this we use only when, because when is for interrupted actions, because one the continuous tense is then broken and interrupted. And when my mum called me into past simple, I was playing with my cat when it attacked me. Okay, so it goes like that. Lots of great suggestions. Don't forget the interruption. Yes, I have marked quite a lot of, of assignments where... There are lots of great exercises about past continuous tense and the interrupted action is completely forgotten. That is half of this assignment. So don't forget it. It is the two together that make this very special piece of grammar. And as I said before, only use when. If, for instance, you were to use while, you would be talking about a different action. So it wouldn't be an interrupted action. It would be a parallel simultaneous action which is not what this lesson is about. So be very clear about using only when. All right. As I said before, the online lesson plan mirrors the face-to-face -face plan. They're only it's only revised for an online lesson. So they are the same class. Use the models to guide you. So as I said, the models are there. Have a look at them by all means, but don't be, don't get sucked into the other grammar and forget this grammar and what this assignment is about. All right, materials and resources, another very, very important section of your assignment. 
frequently, it's because this part is not done correctly that the students have to resubmit. And I will tell you why. You have to include all your materials. So your materials are things like pictures, drawings, and obviously worksheets that you would like to use in your class. Don't only send the links. You need to actually upload them or download them, put them on, copy and paste or screenshot, but you need to include the actual worksheet. The markers can't click on all your links. We are all working from our own computers. We are not joining other weird links and going down some rabbit hole. All your worksheets and pictures you need to give to actually include it. When you don't include it and you only give links, you'll have to resubmit your whole assignment again. So please make sure of this. And also make sure that you reference all the re resources in the bibliography section. If you look on your assignment page, right at the bottom is your section for the bibliography. And you can read through all your links and instructions, which will tell you, not links, all your instructions, which will tell you how you need to write your bibliography. Perfect. So in your lesson, you need to ask a huge amount of questions. So many questions. In your warmer, which is your little warm up stage, which is only about five minutes, you still have to ask a bunch of questions. You need to ask instruction qu checking questions. So the warmer is just a warm up. So there'll be simple things like um, it will be a question. Maybe you have introduced the topic. What did you do last night? And I wrote this down so I didn't get confused about this because it is suddenly get. I will remember, but it's not, you're not asking massive about massive instructions. It's just like you are answering questions. You are sitting and listening. It's just to make sure the students are listening and paying attention more, not more importantly, more easily to, to explain in the presentation stage, you need to ask two eliciting questions. So if you elicit something, it means you are getting information from the students. So once you have, so you are asking for information, you've introduced a topic and now you need answers from the students. You need to, they need to give you usable, useful vocabulary that you can then use in your lesson. So what did you do last weekend? What did you say? What was your grandmother doing last night? So just, you need to just ask questions to get vocabulary. Concept checking questions. Once you have described and explained the grammar, you need to check that they understand it. So what is the tense of the first clause? Is it in the present continuous or the past continuous? Which, which clause is longer? Which action takes longer? Which of the two actions interrupts the other two? So you are asking leading questions to find out if they understand it. In the practice stage, another two instruction checking questions. These ones are clearer and easier to, add, to explain. So now they're doing workshops, workshops, worksheets. Must they work together? How long do you have to work on your worksheet? Two minutes. Must you check with a friend? All of those. Students really need to know what they are doing. I know this from experience. You, you set a student a task and two minutes later you come back and you have you finished and they go I don't understand and you go, they didn't understand something that you thought you presumed they did understand so that is to check that they understand what they need to do <clears throat> in the produce stage another two instruction checking questions so again making sure that they understand what they are doing and what is expected from them and in the plenary wrapping up three eliciting questions so you are asking them to, a great way to elicit from them, and that is to get the students to explain the grammar to you. So say, imagine I have just walked in the class and you need to explain this to me. Another very, very important part of this assignment is all of these questions need to be in direct speech. They need to be written out with inverted commas, teacher, so, Jane, what do you think? Question mark, close inverted commas. You need to write a script. You need to write an entire script. 
This is so that the markers can see how your lesson will actually play out, what it will look like, how you are chatting to the students, what language you're using, how you are explaining things, what kind of questions you are asking. This is the most one of the most important parts of your of this assignment. So carefully write the script for this lesson. It says it tells you exactly how many questions you need to ask. This is the minimum. Obviously, you can ask more. It's not the maximum. You can ask as many as you like within reason. OK. And again, as I said before, do not use the examples in the model or the video. The model is there to help. The video is there to help. It's to guide you, but you can't copy and use the information from it. Okay. The reflective essay is the piece that sort of stands alone in this assignment. You use Gibbs's reflective cycle from 1988 as the structure for your reflective account and the headings as a guide. So you will get the template for this. Fill it in on the template. Don't go off and go crazy. So you use all the paragraphs, use the template, use the headings as a guide. And it's to describe how, what your path and experience of writing this assignment was. What was difficult, what was enlightening, what you were flummoxed by, what you would do differently next time. All those questions are there and you just give an honest, you give an honest account of your path whilst doing this assignment. Use our model as a guide, use your own ideas. So it's all up to you. We need to know how you felt, your own opinions and personal experience. <laughs> okay. These are tips now. The last few slides are just little tips to keep you on the correct path all the way. So use only our templates. Everything you get in that package that I explained in the beginning will be in MS Word. So you can type on it and it will get bigger and smaller as you need. So stick to the templates. Don't, don't change the colors and change the logo. They need to stay as they are. Once you have typed everything, so you've got Word, it's all typed and you've done your spell check, then before you upload it, you need to convert it to PDF. Again, if you don't convert it to PDF, then your markers will not mark your assignment, and you will have to resubmit. It won't be a complete resubmission, but it will waste your time and you know, just convert it to PDF before you send it in. There is a very handy checklist that will you can tick off. That's the best thing when you're doing something. You can tick everything before you submit it. And also use the naming convention guidelines. This is important as well, so that all your assignments are labeled correctly. So they have to start with your surname or family name, then your first name, then the type of file, then what, the fi what kind of file it is. So it will say reflection, then the number if it's your first submission or submission one, if you are resubmitting or resubmission two. So it tells you in detail how you must name each of your files in your submission. Follow the guide. If they are not correct, then your marker might not even open them and just ask you to please resubmit. Okay, more tips. Once you have submitted your assignment and you are looking for feedback, go to your homepage, click on the icon in the top right hand corner, and then select grades. It's a little block, black block with right, right, white writing, not right writing. On the next page, click on your course and scroll all the way down to the bottom and your results will be there. And then your feedback is there at the bottom of the page. The markers write a lot of stuff for you to help you and give you tips and advice. All right. If you... If I don't get to answer everyone's questions today, and if you need help at any stage, you are always welcome to contact Tutor Support and they will get right back to you. Another little thing, we can't preview little bits of your assignment one at a time. You need to send in your entire assignment altogether, not just bits at a time. You get three attempts in total 
So it's plenty of time to learn if you have any mistakes the first time around. And it's also completely fine if you have to resubmit. It's great that you get another opportunity. You know, third time lucky <laughs> or second time lucky. I've done a few versions of this of this webinar and I'm hoping that my third time is the lucky time. So it's fine to resubmit and rehearse and then get it better and better each time. Great. No one said previous slide. Yes, I can imagine why. I will leave it there for a moment because this is how you look for it. When I first started marking, I couldn't find that little button that said grades. So I get it. I'm going to move on, but if you didn't get it, I can go right at the end and we can look at it again. Okay. Previous webinars are available on the YouTube channel. There are lots of them. So there's another version of this one, and there are on general topics, on questions and answers, on all your assignments. There are lots and lots of different videos that you can watch on the YouTube channel. All right, excellent. I'm going to say one little thing because I am on time. I've got four minutes. I was going to say the markers will mark and give you give you feedback. If you have to resubmit, you will get yeses and nos. So if you have, if there's just one thing, for instance, you haven't added in all your resources, but everything else was fine. When you resubmit, you do need to resubmit all of your everything again together, but you only need to work on the resources part. The rest you can stay as it is. However, if there's something that changes a bit, you might have to adjust a few other things. But when you resubmit, you only really need to work on the bits that you haven't achieved that time round. I'm sure you might have more questions about that just now. Okay. Now it is the question and answer session. Okay. Great. I see there were some questions that were that were solved by other people. And we go right to the top. Everyone was from so many different countries. So we had South Africa, Joburg, Scotland. All right, Ireland. And applicable for level five. I did answer that. Get access to level five. Okay. Yes, and someone else answered that question. I'll put this question up. You might have seen. How do I get access to assessment A as a level five student? I recently enrolled. You need to finish all the assignments. And once you get, I think it's past section five, then you get to the assignment section. So if you can't find it, it's because you haven't finished all the sections that you need to, that you need to finish first before you get to the assignment. But someone else answered that question very well. Thank you, Aspen. All right, very nice. Yes, Chris, thank you. All right. What happens if, okay, one fails the third attempt as well? I really, I, I'm sure that that's not going to happen. I'm sure that if, if you go through all your notes, if you go, like, if you're on your third attempt now, you're on your third attempt, go through all your notes, see what your marker has has given you as advice. Go through all that. Watch this webinar again or the other one as well, which tells you all the steps you need to do. Go through your notes, that package. Go through the model sentences. And if you look through all of that and put it together, you will pass. You will have complete faith in you. All right. Three Ps, someone asked. Three Ps. Present, practice, produce. And then the coincidentally the plenary, which also starts with a P, but it's not actually part of it. Someone else has answered that. Thank you very much. Okay. All right, here we have. What do we do if we have a resource that is a video or a song? Would a screenshot of it be okay? In addition to the link, or is the link not necessary if we cite it correctly? Some of the other markers are not overly keen on, on songs, or well, songs are fine, on videos, because it's hard to 
because it's hard to completely gauge what it will what it entails. But if you can explain what you what it you know, couple like explain, don't need the whole script, but what it deals with, show a few pictures and a few screenshots, that would be great. And yes, always add the, the link as well, because you need to add the link in your bibliography section. So add the link and screenshots and explain this video is useful because and if it's a song obviously you need to write all the give the the lyrics so all the lyrics would be useful and i suppose the link as well if there's a good tune but the lyrics would be the most important part and again the link as well in your bibliography not yes not as much so in the resources file in your bibliography what type of what type of material do we use as references? So I am, um, okay, references are all the things that you have done research on. So when you start this assignment in your package from TTA, you get from, you get a lot of help and advice, but Google is there. So you can find worksheets and quizzes and pictures and drawings and photos and anything you find that you think will be useful in teaching your class those would be your references so that's the kind of material you use as a reference and then you also need to to say thank you to this book that i took this worksheet from so you need to say where you've got all your references. You need to reference all your materials in your bibliography and say thank you to them because you're using their material. And all the research you do, that would be those, that is the material you would use as a reference. Okay. Okay. Do we need to actually teach a class for this assignment? One of the first slides talked about a face-to-face -face lesson plan and form of teaching. So you don't actually teach a live lesson because it is an online class, which is why it is so important when you plan your face-to-face -face lesson, lesson, your lesson, that you, that you supply the script for it, that you write down what you would say. So you imagine that you are teaching a lesson, a live face-to-face -face lesson, and you write down, you include in your lesson plan every single thing you would say. Actually, it doesn't have to be every single thing. It has to be an example of, it doesn't have to be everything. Sorry, I will rephrase that. It doesn't have to be everything. It has to be a taste of it and include all of those important questions. And with that, by you explaining, showing what you are adding, and supplying some of the script to that lesson, the markers will be able to imagine that they are there in your face-to-face -face class. So that is how, so that you are giving us a, a virtual, a virtual face-to-face -face lesson. Okay. All right. Here is... Yeah, there's a question here about unit one, and it's not about this assignment. So I would send a ticket to tutor support. So Lillian, send a ticket to tutor support about that, because this webinar is just about level three assignment A and not about other topics. But you are welcome to, to send them a message and a tick, open a ticket and send them a message and they will, we will get back to you and Clear, clear everything up. Okay. All right. This is a quite a common question. So if the lesson plan I'm creating includes a Word document with pictures to help elicitations, do we have to cite or reference each individual picture? If each individual picture comes from the same place, you can say picture of dog, granny, and pizza eater from this from this place so if they're all from the same place as long as you say these three pictures are from here 
that will be fine. If they are from different places, then yes, you need to. So if they're from different places, then yes, you do need to cite and reference each individual picture. If they are from the same place, then just mention these three pictures are from here. Okay, thank you. Um, and again, so that's about a different, that's about unit one, so that is not about this assignment. Thank you. All right. So we've actually, I have spoken so quickly <laughs> that, that we seem to have come to the end of, oh yes, okay, for referencing. We use the Harvard Referencing Guide. Yes, that is correct. That is absolutely correct. And also in all of your TTA notes, there are, they will explain exactly how as well. So, comma, I remember all of those. So, yes, Harvard Referencing Guide and the notes, and it explains it all in your notes as well. Oh, excellent. And I see we have almost run out of questions, which is fine. So, as I said, as someone said, all three attempts. If after the first time you are having some difficulties, you are welcome, obviously, to contact Tutor Support, watch these webinars, and, and they will be helpful to you. Okay, here we go. This is another great a great question. This is excellent. I just struggle with that direct speech part because I can't think of what they'll say. Okay, you don't need to you don't need to include what each student would say. You need to say what the teacher would say. You could never expect and work out what a student would say. You would get the most crazy answers. But yes, so you can, as Machtel said, you make what they say up. That's also true. You have you use your imagination. So just as I said, you are writing this imaginary class so that you you have a virtual class, and so that the markers can attend your virtual class. You have virtual children who will be there too. I've read so many of great assignments where the children and the the responses are excellent. I really have enjoyed them. But you need. Don't worry so much. You're not really writing a script. It's not, it's not a play or a movie. So focus. Focus on the grammar. Focus on the grammar and the questions you need to ask, ask. And don't worry. Don't worry so much. The children will give you strange answers anyway. They will give you all sorts of strange answers. Okay. Okay. All right, good. Um, referencing, so. Oh, where am I? As I click on it. Yes, okay, this is a, this is a, since we do not need to teach a live class, we do not need to make videos, or can we include videos if we would like to as part of our examples during the lesson plan stage? Yes and no. The all the markers, senior markers, are they're not completely crazy about videos, but they can be useful. And if you can if you can include some of the screenshots from the video and explain what is in the video, then yes, videos can be very useful for children and part of the learning process. So if you if you look at it cleverly and and share it cleverly by showing some screenshots and saying this video shows that there are people shopping and all the groceries fall off the shelves one by one and those are the interrupting actions then we'll go all right we get it that's a good idea so if you can explain and describe it very well then yes you can but you can't just say and the let the children watch a video because that doesn't that doesn't tell us anything that doesn't it doesn't show how your class would go all right information required in the warmer all right this is a this is a good one so you need to 
The only questions that need to be asked are the two concept checking questions. The warmer is, if you think of warmer as a warm up, so often, you know, if you got the children to stand up and jump up and down for a minute, that would be a warmer. Firstly, if it's a cold day, that might literally warm them up. If you are online, that you just say, how's everyone? Did you have a great day? That would be the very first part of your warmer. Then the warmer, the, sec the most important part is that you introduce your context. So because this assignment is about the past continuous with the interrupting action, which is also past simple, you are talking about something that happened in the past. So you will have a plan and a plot for your lesson that you are going to talk about the, pre the previous weekend or what they did in the holidays. A lot of kids are coming to the end of their holidays now. So it's like, what did you do last week? What did you do in the last week of your holiday? So those will be great questions that you can ask of the students to get them warmed up. And hopefully you will then get from them, yeah, what did you do last weekend? I watched a movie. I saw my grandmother. I visited my best friend. Already you have three sentences that you can then use in your presentation stage so that you can then add i visited my grandmother when and then you can add a potential interrupting action so you are gathering bits of information from the children that they are familiar with and that you can then use it will be obviously graded correctly because they've given it to you so you, and they'll be interested in it because they they have supplied you okay lovely Good question. This one. I don't know what really is. That might be a typo. Would you need to include pictures for the assignment? Pictures are always good, but I'm not sure. Would you just retype that and tell me what really is? Because I'm not entirely sure. another one but you instead of a picture or video pictures of the object reality something reality i think i'm still not entirely sure so just have another a real object okay i'll get back to that i'll get back to that um not really i think you could you could and it's always up to you Different schools use different systems of how they how they call you as well. I get called Teacher Lisa. I get called Miss Lisa. I get called Miss. In this country, I get called Tani. So it depends. I, I, you can introduce yourself using your first name or it's up to you. It, different countries have different ways of how they call their teachers. So do a bit of research on that. But... It's not imperative that you introduce yourself using. So you can decide. Or you decide and then other people will decide for you and call you things. Okay, real objects. Yes, okay, now I get it. That's a, that is a great idea. Thank you, Lorata. Sorry, I didn't understand. Okay, real objects. Yes. So obviously in the, in the virtual face-to-face -face class, if you have a ball, you're bouncing a ball, in fact, I've read quite a few assignments where the students are doing something and then the teacher throws a ball, which is then the interrupting action. So, yes, you can use a real object. If you are online, not so much. One, one teacher had a – she used some online thing that was like, a, like throwing a ball. It was such a good idea. All right. Real objects. Yes, if you were to – if you said, I'm going to use a yo-yo – Put a picture of a yo-yo. You might as well. And or maybe it's not as simple as that. So you yes, add a picture. The more information you can give and the clearer you can be in how you lay out your assignment, the better. Excellent. Names. All right. I think I've gone require the warmer. Okay. Great 
Um, again, we're coming to the end of the topic. So as I did say, I'm not sure that there are that many people here who are doing level five, but level five is also a grammar, a grammar assignment, different grammar, but you also there's also a teacher language section and also has to follow the PPP format. So that's why this, this webinar is useful to the level five as well because of the similar the similarities in the assignments. All right, great. Are there any more questions? We still have a few more minutes. Okay. There was that slide a few minutes ago. I hope that you got it, which was where you found your assignment on the page. That can be tricky looking at there's so many things on a screen and to find exactly where and you have to scroll down and find and look. So if you get completely confused and can't find things, you can't find the assignment or you can't find your results or whatever, you are always welcome to send a ticket to Tutor Support and they will help you, they will guide you and show you, map, give you a map on how to find your way. Thank you. There's so many people. I hope everyone is, as we are now in spring and autumn, the weather is not as extreme around the world. So we're all in those slightly more pleasant middling, middling stages of the, of the year. Okay. All right. In the, this is a great question. Thank you, Linda. In the controlled Phase, what would be a good task? Great question. So I've mentioned worksheets before. Worksheets are one of the easiest, not easiest, one of the most, I can't think of the correct word, but they are one of the best ways of letting the children, the students work through the knowledge they have learned and be able to test the, for the, the tutor to test what they know and for them to test what they know as well. So worksheets are great. There are so many different kinds of worksheets. So there are gap full worksheets where you go, where there's a space and it says, um, I, oh, that just leaves gaps. <laughs> I'm not good. All the examples I'm thinking are not great, but then you put the word they need to find the correct form of in brackets afterwards. That, so gap full worksheets are great. Then matching worksheets where you get the beginning of the clause and the end of the clause and you match them up. Also great. And jumble worksheets are excellent where all the words are mixed up and the students need to sort through them and put them in the correct order. Those are great things to do as well. Uh, those are good tasks. So the controlled phase are things like worksheets are the most effective way of working through it. Great. And in the produce stage, is, which is the freer practice, it is tempting sometimes to have like a game or something in the freer practice because it sounds like, oh, it's free practice. It must be fun. It's sort of counterintuitive because what one wants from the freer practice is not so much of a format of a game as a a time for the students to actually use the language in a spontaneous way. So if it's a game, there will be rules and and they are not speaking freely. So a freer practice, uh, a freer practice phase, a task would be more conversation based, that you're hoping that the students speak more freely, literally in a free conversation and spontaneously. So that's what you're looking for. Although a game seems like a free thing, it's, it has too much structure for that phase. And the produce phase is sometimes called freer practice. Okay. Is there any chance of failing the certification? Who fails exactly? I am not entirely sure. I, I'm sure that everyone will be able to, to find their way. I put, potentially, if you don't, if you don't complete if you were to not complete the assignments, then, then you wouldn't pass. But if you do complete the assignments, you will pass. You will, you will, you will make it work. If you put the work in, 
you will you will manage to not fail. I would say the people who don't who fail are the ones that do not resubmit. And after having one resubmission, go it's fine, and then they don't come back. They don't finish. If you don't finish, then you won't complete it, which would then be in theory it would be a fail. But if you complete it, you will you'll be able to get it together. Okay. Task in first. How would I say task in first reading? Must be in direct speech. I'm not one hundred percent sure how that how that question goes. First reading. If you include a reading exercise, that would be fun. A reading exercise, and you would introduce it in direct speech. You would say, "Class, this is a reading exercise." and people can read it. The direct speech is that you need to include in this assignment is when you ask all those questions. So it means that you can't say, teacher asks the children if they understand. That is not what we're looking for. That is, that is not what you need. Teacher asks if they know what to do. No, you need to say, does, everyone know where their pens are has everyone got a worksheet which action comes first is the interrupting action the short action or the long action so those are the sentences and that is the kind of thing that needs to be in direct speech so it is the sentences and the questions that you say to the class in your class in your virtual class okay and if there is a reading if there's a reading that you have included, some other story, you can add, you can add bits of reading. It's a great way to get to a context. If you have a little bit of a story, then it is a great, it's a great context or theme to have in your class. But if I didn't answer that question correctly, it's because I'm not a hundred percent sure what to, what you're asking. All right, and we are coming to the end of our session. If there are any last minute questions, then we still have a few minutes, a couple of minutes to fit in one or two last questions. I think that when you look at this whole assignment, you need to, that, that checklist is one of the greatest things. I always find if you have a checklist, then you can go, oh, I've done that. I've done that. And then you know how you are doing throughout the webinar. Throughout the webinar, I'm looking at webinar, how I'm throughout your assignment. <laughs> Sorry. So the checklist is a very good thing as you are going through and completing your assignment. I hope I have included everything in this. We are about to go to another page. I'll leave it, I'll do it in a minute or two, where we ask you, I'm going to go and then come back. We ask you for, I'm going to go, what you thought of the webinar. I'm going to come back to this for now. And there is, there is, okay, great. That is such a lovely comment. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bit nervous about the assignment. That was helpful. I'm so pleased. I was a bit nervous about this webinar. So <laughs> we were nervous together. It really don't be nervous. I mean, obviously everyone is nervous, but it step by step. And there is so much information that you are given, and your hands are held. You are you are guided really step by step through this. So just go through it carefully and slowly. Step by step by step, and you will be and you will be fine. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much too. Thank you. Is it Richard? Thank you, Daddy. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and I get called that so frequently. I'm so pleased it was helpful and informative. So teachers do get called all sorts of different names. Thank you. Uh, it's not my favorite name. I prefer Teacher Lisa. <laughs> I prefer it. But you you smile. You could be Urm, I suppose. <laughs> All right. 
Okay, I'm almost hoarse. So we will, I'm going to go now to our next slide, which says, thank you so much. Thank you so much. If any of this was very useful, obviously it's going to be on YouTube forever after, which is unusual. So you can always look at this one and the other one as well. There's another version of this assignment, of a webinar for this assignment and get all the information you need. And what we are hoping, I'll go to that, is that you will tell us what you thought of this webinar, how much fun it was, how useful it was. And, okay, thank you, Deirdre. Thank you, Emily. Thank you, FB. Thank you, all your assignments. Don't be scared. We all scared of so many things in life and all one can do is just start just take the first step and then once you're in it you get into it and then it's fine and then you find your way it is it's terrifying to start off with like most things are and it does seem like a tall mountain to climb with because there, there is a lot to this it's not just a simple thing there is a lot to it but tackle each each section, one one thing at a time. Don't worry about it all at once. So just one thing at a time. And enjoy the process because it's, it's exciting. You're learning. And as soon as you are teaching, all of you'll remember this. Every time, in fact, every time I teach now, past, past continuous, I'm thinking, I know this. I know this so well. It's so much fun. Study the grammar, be familiar with the grammar, and, and it, the assignment will be easier for you. Please, have out, this will be up on screen afterwards, so you can use the QR code or type out the HTTPS, forward slash, forward slash, write it and send us and tell us what you thought of the webinar. Thank you so much. Thank you, Asim, Elena, Tabojo, Lydia. Thank you so much. Thank you for attending. Have a great evening. Enjoy your weekend. And good luck for your assignment. I might be marking them anytime soon. I'll look out for your names. I'll go, ha ha. So thank you, Lillian. Thank you so much. I am going to put this up. And thank you. Have a great weekend. I'll leave it at that.